I'm drawing on a Fabriano sketchbook paper, size A5, with a Creta color uh, sanguine pencil. I will draw the three concentric circles representing the akins, the stamens, and the petals, but in a more loose manner than in the 30 flower sketches. I want the drawing to be big, but not to exceed the margins of the page. This is the basis on which I establish the size of the circle. I estimate, but you can measure if you want. The akins are about one-fifth of the half of the flower. The second circle is about three times the diameter of the first circle. Because of foreshortening, the stamens in the back look larger than those in the front. So the two circles are not perfectly concentric. Therefore, I set up from the construction stage the point from which I see the flower. It's kind of difficult to do that later. The third circle, again, it's about three times the size of the second circle. So I go around with an estimated uh, length of the second circle and mark few lines. So this is fast, no geometrical instruments. We rely only on intuition this time. Let's draw the Atkins. They are arranged in spiral on a dome-like structure, and those rows are very visible in our picture. It's just like a strawberry. One mistake that can make the drawing look looking not very good is drawing all the Atkins as circles. And this looks very flat. Because they are on a dome structure, they are placed on top of each other like the tiles of a roof, so you don't see them entirely round. You see it round only the one you are looking at directly from above. Because our point of view is slightly from one side, uh, let's assume our round one is this one, and the other ones are built on top on the right, on the back of others, so we only see part of them. And we see less or, and less of them as they approach the margins. I'm not drawing circles, I'm drawing arc of, arcs of circles. Hear the phone called and my hand startled. I'm trying to repair that. Also, don't feel the structure as a perfect circle. Draw a few akins uh, just outside or inside that circle. I fade this drawing a bit because it will be partially covered by the tip of, the, of some stamens and I don't want this to be confusing. Because I will not be able to erase that mark, I will include it in the outline of an anther. The anther is looking something like this, with two long lobes. Not all the stamens, some look like they have lost the anthers. But I have this image in mind when I'm drawing the stamens uh, that show anthers and uh, the details are not visible. So I keep in, in mind that shape. For these anthers that point upward, I see an arc that goes from left to right. So I draw them along that line. This one is close to the Akins. And here on the left I see another arc or diagonal that goes like that. And again, I'm drawing the anthers along that line. And I have an anther that goes behind that line. 
So you can see I'm trying to place the anchors first, then add the filament. Also, I'm drawing first the anchors that are inside the construction circle I've drawn, then the ones whose tips are touching the edge of the circle. There's another one that is turning here. Always the um, shorter uh, stamens first. Some of the anchors that are turning and twisting have really fine shapes. Look at the shape. So here is that line. Now I can draw the long stamens behind. And I use the one uh, the ones in the front row, the shorter ones, as guides. On some of them, I exaggerate their tilting. I don't want them to look too straight. This middle of the flower is very much alive, and I don't want to kill that vivacity with my drawing. Um, I'm keeping the proportions and structure, but I make some small changes where I can. These two are a bit smaller than the circle, about this size. And these are longer again. One behind this, another one here. And two behind this one. Now I can redraw the Akins. So this is the center, not perfect, but it looks three-dimensional and alive, and I'm happy with it. If you are just learning to draw, please give it a try. You will encounter this um, structure on many, many flowers. To position the petals correctly, as a general rule, I'm looking for horizontals, verticals, or diagonals uh, created by the petals or the space between the petals and I use that as guides. For instance, one can be this almost horizontal line here in the middle. One that I especially like is this diagonal between petals and I will probably use both. I will draw this one and instantly the number and the position of the petals are more discernible. So I have one, two, three, four.